Yo, this your boy Gell, and welcome to Common Conversations. Yeah, that's it. 2020 is behind us. It was crazy. It was all kind of new, new. And yo, we now we know how to pivot. This is 2021. Let's get it in. And I want to have you on the show. Come podcast with me. Let's go live. Let's sit down and talk about all the good, the bad, the ugly, the green, the funny. Yo. Y'all know how we do it. This is Gelly Gale. This is Common Conversations, and I'm inviting you to come tell your story. Let's go. Start it up. Sure, I am. <laughs> I'm Luana Ball, and this is my awesome husband, Maurice Ball, affectionately known as Lou and Mo. <laughs> Let's go. Nice. And we are the owners of Nine Round 30 Minute Kickboxing. A lot of people think it's a um, like a boxing training gym, but no, you don't actually. You get to all the effects of kickboxing without actually getting kicked or punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> all the effects without getting kicked or punched. Yeah. In you get gloves, you get gloves and stuff, okay. but you ain't you ain't squ- you guy. ain't squaring yeah. up on nobody. No yeah. sparring, no sparring yeah. necessary. Now, now me 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 and me and my son Isaiah, we put the gloves on and we we spar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, get down. Yeah. They do that even at home though. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, so when did y'all start like So actually we um acquired it from a previous owner okay. um last year, so 2019 and 20 2020, sorry, 2020, it's just a blur. So um, uh, we purchased it in March, literally right before COVID shut the world down. So um, we actually opened it, but did not, I'm sorry, acquired it, but didn't get an opportunity to open until May, uh, the end of May, right after Memorial Day. Well, (coughs) that, so part of our plan last year, when we said that at the end of 2019, coming into 2020, we were looking like there was something that we knew that we wanted to do as businesses that we that we wanted to do. So in our planning and setting our goals, it was like, okay, we want to do yada, 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 we want to do da, 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 and the business, owning a business was one of those goals. And so I came up with the, uh, my homeboy do, does this property preservation company and um, dealing foreclosures and stuff like that. So I was like, yo, let's do this property preservation. We don't really need it don't really, it's not in a lot of overhead. We already got a truck. We already got the tools that it requires. Now we got to do is just kind of put some things in place. And she was like, nah, I ain't feeling that. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I'm like, okay, and we just trying to get, we, are we just trying to get money or are we trying to do something? You know, I was just like, you know, me, I was just trying to get money. But, uh, and she was like, I don't want to do that. So I was like, all right, whatever, whatever you want to do, let's, you know, we'll, whatever. And so she was looking at a theory initially because she was a member at Orange. I don't want to do that. But then, I don't want to talk about it. okay. So, and we'll edit that part out. So, so the Orange theory can scratch that. So there was another. Just keep saying it. Another, there was a, so, so what ended up happening, don't talk about she, started, she started to, uh, she started to research, research. Mm-hmm. And then there was some, there was a couple of options on the table. And then uh, the other option was an option the new space down there. Uh, other space. <laughs> and then, uh, she researched and then this one came up and then she was actually looking at Do over in Louisville. Go ahead. Because <laughs> you know, I know my part. My part was. Where are you going with this my story? Part, <laughs> my part, it is a conversation, but. My part was, we knew that we wanted to do something. You're going to have to edit a whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go sit here and be quiet. So we know that Mr. Ball got in the game for the money. For the money. He said, "Let's let's get it." He said, "Let's let's get get that money." money. Right. 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 So we know that people like to fight. We in Southern Indiana, they scrappy. Let's get money. Let's get it. There it is. All right. But your story. (laughs) You know, we've been we've been married for a long time, so it's always two sides to every story and every marriage. So anyway, but it's all good. And that is that is a part of the story for sure. But at the end of the day, we wanted to do something that um, we were also, you know, more passionate about, right? So, you know, it's it's 
it's a lot being an entrepreneur. You, you know, you put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this, even if you're not, you know, in the business full time, which we both still work our full time jobs. But, you know, it requires having some passion, you know, behind this because, you know, it's a lot of, you know, time and financial resources. So we really wanted to look at something that we were already doing. Um, there is another concept that I was very, very, very kind of bought into um, uh, that was not in existence on this side of the river. So we wanted something that was like a really easy concept, um, didn't require a ton of overhead, didn't require um, a ton of uh, space and staff to run it. So, you know, we just, yeah, I started doing a lot of research on a couple of different concepts and nine round, um, actually what ended up happening is, is in looking, I said, you know, wow, I would, I would love to have something similar to a nine round, but it was already one over here. And, um, and then after doing a little bit of research, found it was for sale. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and we wanted to just the create, timing, create- The timing at that the time timing, was right. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Pre part of the plan and goal was create legacy for our, for our son. Yeah, something oh, absolutely. That, you know, that we can raise him up in understanding business instead of, and so he can have options. You know, it's okay to go and work for somebody. It is, it's, it's okay, but at the same time, know that there's a another option on the table that if you wanted to ex, uh, be exposed to this, you can. And so businesses are closing, yeah. restaurants are closing because people got the walking dead. And um, how do y'all survive this? Like how do y'all in a brand new business open doors that technically can't open because of pandemic and civil unrest? Uh, I, I'll speak to the, the civil unrest. I, I mean, I was front lines with you on a lot of that stuff that was happening over the summer. And uh, I, we, we know how to separate the two. The, the, the civil unrest, my belief and what I stand for, what I believe when it comes to that, I never brought it in here because of one, I mean, when we had just opened and we had just took it over and we were still trying to f fly under the radar. Um, but I let, I let those two be separate. My life outside of here was separate. So I didn't bring anything in because we are in Southern Indiana and it could have been damaging to the business um, because of the ethnic support is not here. Like if we was in a more concentrated area with more minorities where we could pull in more of the minority business, then I think uh, our stance and what we believe we could have been more visible and more vocal from a business standpoint. Um, but from from that, that I don't really, you know, there were some times that they closed everything on this in this area, but from the civil unrest, we, I, I'm gonna stand up for what's wrong, um, and if now, now I really don't care if you believe, you know, what you believe or what you believe about me and what you think about me, because at the end of the day, God is our provider, and um, we don't, you know, I, I just at the end of the day, He's gonna provide for us, and uh, so that's where I get from the from the from the civil unrest, you know. I'm, we, we need to be a voice. We had to ruffle some feathers. We had to be out there front lines. You was front lines. You know, we had to get down there and, and be heard. And uh, I, I, the first time I went down there, I knew I was going down there. It was right after the riots, right? I mean, like the next day. And I didn't tell her this or my son this, but I knew that I was coming down. If, if, if my life ended that day, I was okay. I went down there, I, I, I made dinner, we hung out, we took some pictures, but in my mind, I'm saying, this could be my, this could be it right here. And um, so I went down because of that. I mean, I went down because at, the, at some point it has to stop. And if it meant me losing my life in order for somebody else or my son to have justice, then I was cool with that. And so, so definitely from a, I guess, a social awareness perspective, um, you know, I mean, he was much more on the front lines than I was. But, you know, our business, I mean, we we were vocal in where we stood. You know, obviously, we're, we're, we're a black-owned business, right? So Black Lives Matter to us right. <laughs> sure. for all obvious reasons. And, um, and you know what? We, you know, what we did voice about it, um, I think... 
I'm thankful that our members were supportive. They know we own the business, right? They know we're black. We're not, we're not hiding in the shadows. Um, and, and actually what it did is um, it gave us an opportunity. You know, we have a diverse staff. And it gave us an opportunity to have some sensitive conversations. Even we have some some young people that are on our staff. So it gave us an opportunity, honestly, to to be um, a safe space to have some uncomfortable conversations. Um, and even, you know, our, our manager, who's amazing, um, you know, uh, she's she's a young white girl. She was front lines. She, she's she was front lines yeah. in several of the protests in Louisville. Yeah. Um, so you know. It, I think us being, not that she wouldn't have done it anyway, uh, because we didn't necessarily encourage her one way or the other, but I think it gave her a level of freedom as well because we were, ex we were showing support of what she was offering. And it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't surface. Like she legitimately was out there um, more than I was, honestly. Uh, so. You know, so, but from a survival perspective, from the business, it has been tough. I mean, just like most of the businesses um, around, black owned or otherwise, um, I do think that our businesses have um, an even lower um, survival rate at a time like this because of lack of resources. Um, but I am thankful that we were able to, we partnered with um, the city of Clarksville, was able to get a grant. Um, we, were, we were able to get early uh, access to PP, PPP. Um, and thankfully all, you know, we had everything in alignment. So, you know, the forgiveness was, should not, we haven't filed for all of that yet, but should not be an issue. And we do plan to get the second wave of PPP to continue on. But, um, but you know, realistically, it's tough. I mean, we did lose business, um, but not because of civil unrest. We lost more so because of COVID. Yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, well, I can quickly say what we lost was comfort, right? Like, you're not very comfortable when you're trying to figure out how to make it all work, right? And, and especially for us buying a franchise, um, there's a, you buy into a business model, right? And in the middle of that, we had to I mean, we're talking about March and April, still having bills that have to be paid associated with, a, with the business. Um, and we had, to, we had to adjust. So what we gained was our ability to be creative. You know, we had to think outside the box. We had to create a new, like <laughs> our trainers were not accustomed to doing online workouts. We're doing Zoom workouts for, for members. Um, you know, they, they, we had to figure it out. So, I mean, honestly, I think it brought, um, brought us all together. Um, and, and actually the team got closer. Made them um, more creative because they're young, yeah. you know, they, and this is, this is some of their, like, they probably got to have maybe one or two other jobs, but for the most part, they're, some of them are still in college and, or recently graduated from college. So the, ex, the work experience, so to be able to push them out their comfort zones, to have them to have input, to be, to, and I think what the what it did from a, a good standpoint was it gave them ownership. So it, it gave them buy-in, and they they had to you know it was like if this is going to be successful, it's got to be a joint effort from all of us and not just us, you know. So it to see some of the create creativity come in and see the our our our, our young trainers blossom into to these uh, I just break that shell of what they were used to and, and see them being a little bit more assertive now yes we want to keep pushing them to try to be as best as they can but to see during this time it to see them all come together and be like hey we got to make this thing work it, it was it was good to see oh so a little different, huh? right? So if we, if we were to look back, if you were to look back at 2019, prior to making this purchase, prior to saying, you know, because the world was booming. Right, you know, right, right. We, yeah, we, life we, was good. Life is good. We had Trump country. You can, you can have over 50 people like in with no tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, 2020 comes and there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Record scratch. Right, there is no tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. There was a time where you say, you know, when your parents used to say, Go outside, cause go, you know, going outside ain't going nowhere. Go outside. 
but going outside did go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah. You so can't. you can't go outside like that anymore. And you have, a, and y'all started a business that requires people to be a part of it. Right? Yeah. Right. So would you, would you have, if you could go back to 2019, would you tell yourself something different than what you told yourself oh, in sure. 19 prior to doing this? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, my, what I would have told us is we probably wouldn't, we, for me, we probably wouldn't have bought it. Okay. At, at when we bought it. Not yeah. saying we wouldn't have, we, but it timing just. Timing is everything. Yeah. Timing is everything. And the timing could be like, even worse, right? Hold yeah. on to, hold on to like September, August, <laughs> November. Yeah. But timing is crazy because who thought that, I mean, I know us, we were just like, okay, if we can just hold out a couple of weeks, you know, a couple of months, then a couple of months turn into six months, which turn it, I mean. Now we're a year into this thing. Yeah. Almost so, a year yeah. for us as far as ownership, but a year into the pandemic as well. Oh, trust know. me, we had to laugh, you know, end of March when everything shut down and we're like, really God? Yeah. <laughs> like for real, like that's what you're gonna do with us. Like after we put the money in, on the table, right? Yeah. Like, you, could have, you couldn't. Have, you couldn't have not. You couldn't. Have, you could have not done it in February. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly where we. But, but what that do. also did too was it gave us a greater trust and dependency on that God will provide. Like it's not cliche. It's for us. You right. know what I'm saying? Sure. Like it is. It is definitely uh, something that when you got people that 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 have to pay to come in here, we have to trust that God is able and he showed himself strong. So all all you know, all jokes aside, he, he has he has been faithful and that's the reason why we're still open, to be honest. So when you when you think about mindset coming into twenty twenty one, right? Pandemic ends and gone. Right. right. Civil rest is a matter of fact, right. we might even have a revolutionary war right, right now. Exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. 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 Exactly, right. 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 And, and so every capital across the country now has our We're boarding up the doors from them now. <laughs> yeah. We just sitting right. back watching. We're gonna see how this thing play out. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you so how do you plan 2021 and, and identify, you know, a level of success that keeps you in the game. Yeah, you know, I think I think what you asked before about, you know, what do we gain from that? Like now we can go into this planful, right? Like we already know that there's a period of time where we're not going to get that typical right after New Year's resolutions, flooding the gyms, everybody's in. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, that's that's what happens in the gym world. So, you know, we didn't get that. And um but we we didn't expect it either. So we had to really kind of plan ahead. You know, that's really, that's what business is about. Like if you're in this thing for the long haul, you gotta, you gotta, you know, forecast. yeah, you gotta go ahead and forecast. You gotta make sure your business plans are in place. So that's a lot of what we did is now we're prepared that if for some reason we do have to shut down again, we already know, in fact, our, um, our company, our franchise company, our franchisor, um, like completely revamped our online workout platform. So now it's state of the art. Whereas before it was literally like, here's a camera. <laughs> like we're just in the camera, we just got cameras propped up on, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, I mean, we're much more prepared, um, you know, really from a tactical perspective of how do we can, you know, get around some of those obstacles that we were not at all prepared for. Okay. Yeah. Hey, let me shift you a little bit because we talked pandemic. Challenges being there. We are in Southern Indiana. We're not going to go on too deep of what that means being here. Um, but this is the Bob series, black owned business, right? right? Um, and there are not a lot of black owned businesses in Southern Indiana. Um, and there's not a lot of black owned businesses where the owners will come out and say, hi, we're black owned. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen a shift or a tide trend changing here in Southern Indiana? specifically about being black owned and are you seeing more black businesses work with black consumers in our market um i'll let him jump in for sure but i can say from my own you know knowledge like not just being a black owned business but what network of other black owners are there other black owned businesses in southern indiana and i'm not even aware of of what those who those business owners are so i mean not just outreach to um, black consumers, but even just networking amongst each other, you know, and, and as we're learning of resources, like I said, I mean, 
I wish I knew of other when I got um, word of the grant that was available in Clarksville. If I knew of other black owned businesses, I absolutely would have run out, hey, here, you know, they're giving money away. Make sure you get your applications in because some of those things happen at a drop of a dime. You know, it's not a lot of time, a lot of lead time in it. And so, um, so no, I don't think that there's been a tremendous shift as much as I'd like to see. I, you know, I think sometimes we get kind of pulled in, Southern Indiana kind of gets pulled into what Louisville is doing. And Louisville may have a lot of that going on, but not so much to me on this side of the river. Yeah, I can, I can agree. Like, honestly, I only know a, a couple of black owned businesses and um, I honestly don't know how they, how well they're doing. And, uh, but from a, from just from a perspective of people knowing that we're black, I think, uh, I can, I, I can say that I think now our base is accepting of it. And before, like I used to tell, like when we first bought it, I was like, put yourself up on the website, put yourself. And she was like, nah, 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 nah. And she, she held off and. And I, I mean, there's reasons for that, right? So, you know, we've talked about this, Miguel, that, you know, kind of what you're alluding to is, you know, how do we drive a perception to people that don't look like us, right? That they will come and support us more because there is a, there's another perception within the black community that we don't support each other, right? So how do we survive? Well, we have to survive by getting other people outside of our community to, to to be engaged with our business. And sometimes the non-color people, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying it that way, the non-people of color, um, you know, don't always, you know, once they realize that, sh that especially in this area, when they realize that this person is, um, this is an owner, so they're gonna benefit from your resources, right? That they tend to pull back a little bit. But to his point, to Maurice's point, you know, we have had tremendous support and, and I'll say that, you know, um, that, a, you know, probably a majority of our membership here is non-people of color. Yeah. Right. And, and um, but, you know, we, he's definitely much more visible on our social media. Um, I am on our website as an owner. We're both on our, on Google as the owners. And we did that not just because of what was going on during um, the summer, but to let people know and to let people of color know that this you is can do this. this right this business is black owned yeah and and uh <clears throat> and i think that one quality service trumps a lot of that mm -hmm. right you know Absolutely. Uh, so we we pride ourselves on on being have a, a quality service and so we we make sure that we we do everything in excellence and that we try to we try to keep everybody in mind so um, but we also want to be, we want to be a model for those who don't think that they can. I mean, I posted it on Facebook in this, um, this group I'm in, this Black Fathers group. And the, the response was like, yo, I, man, can we talk to y'all? We, man, we want to do this and we want to do that. And man, how many, what did y'all have to do? And the steps and da, da, da. And I pulled out some, some sustainable relationships because we, we just, I just posted something. Hey, y'all, look. We ain't trying to brag on the stuff that we have or what we what we're done, but what we're trying to do is we want to be an example so that people know that you can come out here and get it. It ain't and an option. We want you, we want to be an option for your workout. Right? Yeah, I mean, like we own the business, so we want people to know. But yeah. you know, I mean, we've had several of our friends that you know, like, oh wow, your guys own a. I mean, we've we. We've been in business for a long time. So this isn't even the first business that we've opened. This is the first franchise we've bought into. And so, you know, I think that kind of, you know, to some to some may bring a little bit more of a credibility of your business, right? Because it's not just like a mom and pop type of operation. But at the end of the day, I mean, you still got to do the same steps, whether you, you know, are a single private owner, you own a franchise, any of that stuff. So. Um, you know, we love to, to be mentors to other entrepreneurs, um, share our stories, share our, our journey with anybody, you know. Um, but, you know, got to be willing to put in the work. And share information. I think that's one of the things that black yeah. community don't do is um, 
And if every if you know me and you if you know me, you know that I don't have no problem opening my resources up to anybody. Oh, you need oh yeah, holler at my man. You need video, uh, holler at my man again. He that's what he does. You know what I'm saying? Like I I I, I am I, I am my network is open to anybody who need need something. And um and I think that's one of the things that the black community struggle with is being able to share resources so that everybody can come up. We, you know, it's like I want all of us to come up. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you giving me the platform, even on the casual conversation, because it was a it was an opportunity. You extended a platform that I didn't have, and uh, even this is a platform that we didn't have. And so um, to be able to, I mean, we 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 appreciate it, man. We just like we we want to be able to get into the pool and say we all can come up. We. I think we've had some sidebar conversations about that in the past, right? Yes, like, absolutely. you know, that it, it, you know, we have to come together with like-minded, you know, people of color that want to see our communities elevate, to want to, want to see our businesses elevate, to want to see our economic status elevate, that you start to see not just, you know, businesses being open, but general ra generational wealth being developed, right? Um, you know, and, and, and we can do it if we just, you know, we, we take advantage of these types of opportunities. So we are thankful. And then um, we gonna, we're going to see if Tia going to work out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're answering all the questions I had. About and I'm trying not to therapize this whole thing. <laughs> you know, don't ask a therapy question. So why? So, so the therapy, yeah. <laughs> If we walk away in this conversation, right, we think about 19, we think about 2020, we're in 2021, you know, life is still life. Life has changed drastically for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and everyone's looking for a, that, that, that dime that says, this is how you be successful. Yeah. If there are five things that we could walk away in this conversation that you could leave viewers about being successful, what would it be? Um, five. One is, um, and this is the main one, our success is not based on us. We are committed to God's plan and trusting that God has a plan and that he knows what he's doing. So I think that is the, that's number one, being able to trust that he's able and that, that we're not here on our own accord. And two, I think being able to take chances and take risk, uh, some calculated chances, some calculated risk, some non-calculated chances, some non-calculated risk. You have to you have, to have your your finances and yes. your, your finances and your credit in in, in yes. place. This is not a this is it's not something that you know you you got you could be liquid, but your credit may not be good, or you may you know you may have the credit, but your liquid may not be good. So being able to have those two to to talk because if you're going to do anything, you got to sometimes you got to float somebody else's money, and and uh, that's a whole nother series that, that it you, is <laughs> that, that, you, <laughs> that you need to do as a part of the Bob series or some other series. But financial, I think is a whole nother. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would say find mentors, talk to success, successful people. It may not be in your field, but have a group of people that you can have a sounding board with that you can throw throw ideas off of some accountability partners and. Um, Five, I say, uh, have fun. I mean, that that would be my five. Okay. We got, we oh, got different seven, five. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we got yeah. different five. No, I mean, but yeah, then I think just let it let it become let it let it be fun because the moment it becomes stressful, and it takes it it, it is no longer fun, then it becomes work. And I mean, I mean, it takes work to get it, but I'm saying like, <laughs> you know, like. Like, dang, I got to go to the... Look, okay, so that is true. And I know I'm not trying to say that's cliche. It's a lot of work, y'all. Yeah, I is. mean, it's a lot of work. So you got to be willing to put the, put in the work. You got to be willing to do it. It don't just happen just because you wish it will happen. And you pray it will happen. Because, yeah. you know, faith without works is is dead. Yeah. That's, that's sure. the word. Okay, sure. so... You know, you got to be willing to put in the work for sure. You got to put some and, features. And, and have some stick-to-itiveness, yeah. right? You got to be able to persevere 
um, in the midst of trials that come. And that's even without a COVID. That's even without a pandemic. That's even without civil unrest and a crazy, you know, political system that we're in right now with everything going on. Like you got to be willing to, to stick through it because you're going to have up days and down days. So, yep. And then all of everything else that he said. <laughs> Yeah, right. So seven yeah, yeah. instead so of seven. five. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I like five, five, because that's a round number. It's, it's, it's seven is perfection. Oh, come on. I've got that feeling rushing through my body. I know that it is here to stay. It's like you're my personal Illuminati. I know that some might say that I am just a bad girl. But if you treat me right. This whole world, no, I'm not gonna Yo, this your boy Gelligel, and welcome to Common Conversations. Yeah, that's it. 2020 is behind us. It was crazy. It was all kind of new, new. And yo, we now we know how to pivot. This is 2021. Let's get it in. And I want to have you on the show. Come podcast with me. Let's go live. Let's sit down and talk about all the good, the bad, the ugly, the green, the funny. Yo. Y'all know how we do it. This is Gelligel. This is Common Conversations, and I'm inviting you to come tell your story. Let's go.